Hello everyone and welcome to the third video in the object oriented programming section of this course. And in this course we're going to dive deeper into methods. So I've used that term methods and you can think of it as basically when you're constructing this uh, function syntaxes within that class, that DEF. Um, and so to put it more formally, you can think of methods not just as functions defined inside the body class, but they're used to perform operations with the attributes of our objects. And methods are used in the encapsulation concept of the object-oriented programming paradigm. And encapsulation basically allows you to divide responsibilities in programming, and it allows you to handle really large applications. So, for the most part, you can basically think of methods as functions acting on the object that take the object itself into account through that self argument. So what we're going to do now is create a circle class or a circle object using the class keyword. And we're going to be using a ton of methods and this should really drive home a lot of what we've been learning about as far as objects, methods, and instantiation. So I'm going to create a class called circle, capital C. I pass in the object as a keyword, and now I put pass. So we have our really basic circle class. So what do I want to do first? If you remember from the last video, we had class object attributes. Um, and that was the species class object attribute for that dog class. So remember, all dogs are mammals, so we would put that first. So here, I'm going to put any, remember, class object attributes. So something that's true for any instance of the class. So what's true for circles? Well, for circles, in general, we know pi is always a constant, right? And so I'm going to put as a class object attribute, pi is equal to 3.14. And I'm going to actually embed that into the circle class. Now, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense that uh, pi is part of the circle, but it's nice that we can have it as an instance of this class object attribute to show that it's the same no matter what kind of circle or how large of a circle you're building. So I've rounded it off to the 0.14 two decimal places. And now what I'm going to do is get started with, remember our special method, the first one, this underscore underscore INIT, this initiation method. Remember I always put in self whenever I'm putting a method inside a class. And let's just say pass here. And let's go ahead and make a circle called C. Okay, so we have our circle, super simple. So what do we want to add to the circle? Well, we know circles have a radius, right? Now a radius would be an attribute of a circle. So I'm going to put in radius, and by default I'll set the radius equal to 1. So in case I don't pass a radius, it'll automatically set that to 1. So now I'll say self.radius, the attribute of the circle, is equal to radius. Okay, so now if I have my circle, I just ran all three of these cells. If I put tab, I can ask for pi from the circle and it will always give me back 3.14 no matter how big the circle is. And now I can also ask for tab radius and the radius of this circle is 1. Now I could have made another circle with a radius of whatever I wanted, maybe 100. And note now when I run that cell and I ask for the radius, it gives me 100. But when I ask for pi, still, since it's a class object attribute defined outside of any of this met of these methods so far, it's going to be the same no matter what other attributes the object has. Okay, so now let's start another method. So again, methods are basically functions within an object that have a reference to the object itself. So let's make a method that calculates the area of a circle. So I'll call this def area, and I always pass in the self arguments. And so what is the area of a circle? 
Well, the area of a circle will be, and I'm going to put in, in comments here, it's going to be the radius squared, right? Multiplied, I'll put an asterisk here, by pi, right? Pi r squared is the radius of a circle, or excuse me, is the area of a circle. So, if I ask for the area of my circle object, I'm going to want to return radius squared times pi. But remember, radius um, isn't clear enough for Python here. It needs to know which radius. And that's why I'm going to input self.radius. Since radius isn't actually defined anywhere except as a class attribute. So self.radius lets Python know, hey, take the radius or this attribute of this current object. And we can do the same with pi. And now this will work well. And actually, excuse me, for this self, this dot pi, remember it's not a normal attribute, it's a class object attribute. So it's actually going to call from circle. So if I run that, create a circle for radius 100, now I can ask for its area, close parentheses since this is a method, not an attribute, and it, gives, it returns the area for me. Okay, so let's break down what's actually happening here from the top. I have my class, capitalized circle, pass an object. We have class object attributes. These are referenced for any instance of circle. It'll always have these be true. So circle.py will always be 3.14. Okay. Then I have my init, the special method, which initiates all the attributes of my class. And in this case, I only have one other than self, which is the radius. And then I have a method within my class as well, which looks just like a function. In this case, it only takes in the self argument. And it's going to be the radius squared times pi. So I'm going to return the self.radius, this attribute, squared, times this class object attribute, which is circle.py. OK, perfect. So now let's go ahead and build on top of what we're thinking about. And let's say I wanted to reset the radius. How would I do that? I could make another method. I'll call it set radius. It'll take self as an argument. And it will also take, let's call this new radius as an argument. And what is this going to do? It's going to be a method you can call on your circle, set radius, that takes in an argument, a new radius, and then it will reset its self.radius attribute. And the way we can do that is just by saying self.radius self is then equal to that new radius. Okay, so I ran that cell. So now let's make a circle C that has a radius of 10. Go ahead and check its area, 314. And now, if you notice, I have this set radius. And if I put shift tab, it tells me to type, string form, file. I can actually add a doc string in here, just like I could for a function, and say this method takes in a radius and resets the current radius of the circle. Okay, perfect. Let's go ahead and take that, run that cell, create the circle, check its area again, and now if I click Shift Tab here, you'll notice I can expand it get the definition and see this method, the doc string there that I wrote. Perfect. Okay, so now set radius. What's my current radius? Well, I have C, right? And I can track its attribute. Its current radius is 10. So I'm going to use my new method I just created to set the radius to, let's say, 20. 
And now, if I check the radius of my circle, it's set to 20. So that's how we're basically building out our own methods for the objects we're able to create. And one more, let's just say we wanted a method for getting radius um, that was strictly a method, not an attribute. I could just say something like get radius. Remember, all methods within a class have to take self as an argument. And I will just return self.radius. So this is essentially the same as just calling radius, but I just want to make it explicitly a method instead of an attribute. So I'm going to create a circle again, check the area, its radius is 10, and I can also now use get radius to get the same number out. Notice how radius, since it's an attribute, doesn't have the parentheses, but since get radius is a method, it does need these parentheses to signify I'm not passing in any arguments. Okay, so I want you to notice how we use the self notation throughout this class to reference attributes of the class within the method calls. And go ahead and review how the code above works by creating your own methods. So what I want you to do is to make sure you fully understand this is create a new method here called def perimeter. It'll take in self and I want you to fill in the code here that returns the perimeter of the circle. That will be the method. And then what I also want you to do is instead of creating a method, see if you'd be able to take perimeter in as an attribute. How would you do that? See if you'd be able to somehow either calculate it or reset it based on what the radius and that class object attribute was. So see if you could say self.perimeter, what would you put in here, question mark, to make that work. Okay, so I know we just went over a lot and we're gonna go over it um, just as a basic rundown, but really take your time with this. I know it's hard and I know it's confusing, but you'll eventually click. So don't worry if you're still a little confused on what's actually going on. So just to cover what we did in this lecture, we went over methods and generally you can think of methods as just functions defined inside the body of a class that take in a self argument so they know they're referring to the object class. So here we have what's known as a special method, this underscore underscore init underscore underscore. It always takes in self and then it takes in any parameters you want to initialize that version of your object, in this case circle. Before that we put in any class object attributes we want and those are attributes that will be the same for any instance of this circle class or circle object. And then nitty gritty, the methods themselves. Here we've created a method called area that just returns the area of the circle based on both an attribute and a class object attribute. Then we created a method called set radius and we created a doc string for this one and it said this method takes in a radius and resets the current radius of the circle. Again, always takes in self. And in this case, it took in new radius as an argument and it just reset the attribute radius to the new radius. Okay, and what I want you to do is go ahead and create a new method for getting the perimeter out. And then I also want you to see how would you do that if you just wanted to do the attribute version, just set perimeter as a straight up attribute since the beginning. Okay.